Welcome back to the classroom. Come on in. No lay pass required. Today we are getting into season three, episode six of The Legend of Vox Machina, titled The Coming Storm. Ooh, I think this is going to be, um, you know, as I mentioned, very much a role play heavy episode. If you're going back to like live stream, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of role play here. Um, we obviously are going into, I guess, like Scanlan's, I don't, I don't know what to call it, his, uh, his, his pad, his, uh, I, I thought maybe it was going to be like a reference to like Lehman's tiny hut, but I think, uh, his magic key, it, it's more of a reference here to like him being able just to, you know, have fun with whoever he wants, wherever he wants, whenever he wants. <laughs> I mean, it would fit his character quite well, and it's, um... Weird that it hasn't come up until now, but all it means is that we're gonna get to see some fun roleplay here. I love having some character moments. I love getting into just how everybody thinks. Uh, obviously, last episode was very combat heavy, and so this I, I feel like we're gonna be building up to something really big here. But if you did miss last episode, it was absolutely insane. So make sure to check the card up in the top right corner uh because i don't want to wait much longer to get into this so without further ado let's see what the coming storm has to offer this is really cool though what is this <laughs> no not his gold records what the hell that's so cool where the fuck is that music coming from? All yeah. your questions should be answered. Wait, does he have little servants? Gadgets and gizmos. Rod, here's your fighting pit. Nice, nice, What? This is so cool. And maybe grow me some spies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I must have missed when he found they found this key. It must have been like... This is so cool. The Chateau Short Hall. Oh, it's been a while since we had a scanless song. A whole lot of kink, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jeez, all right. This is too many, too many attractive people in the same room. <laughs> Not what I was expecting for our, for starting off, but I, I I think that that was a key that they must have grabbed from um. Or maybe it was from somewhere else. I, I might be re not remembering it correctly. So is this going to be like a more lighthearted episode after the really, really not so lighthearted ones? Oh, uh, Vax, did you need something or... Stop! Just a soak. Is it the bathtub scene? Actually, it's round. <sighs> that hits the spot. <laughs> Stop! No Please tell me this is it. Right about my sister. <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> but mainly... <gasps> Oh my goodness, come on! With a brow, ultimately, if you make Vex happy. Oh, that's and nice, Lee. Oh, <laughs> and it's wonderful how you care about her happiness. But it's right to care about so weird. Eyes. It's so weird seeing him without glasses. We're cool then. <laughs> Check for traps next time, all right? Good call. Stop, please, please. I need her to pop up. I need her to pop up. <laughs> Stop! Oh my goodness! Yes! We got the freaking bathtub scene! Hit me, come on. What are we about to do? Oh, fire! Oh, they're practicing. Oh, can't. Not doing a great job of uh, aiming it. Is it? Oh, they're still being super awkward. Back there. A pretty good wingman yourself. Ah uh, uh, Yeah. Um night. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Open the door. Open the door. Oh, somebody do something. Oh my goodness. You guys all need to Oh, okay. Teammates with benefits. God, that looks so comfortable, honestly. Question good. Oh. 
much time to oh shit we're gonna definitely have whitestone tact like whitestone see if i can't build a home again ah uh, crap an open invitation you know you are technically nobility now <laughs> true i have a title yes that you do oh man Always looks nice. Always is like probably a perfect temperature. Ah, still is trying to do right. Yeah, sorry. They only make chicken. It's a whole thing. <laughs> what about eggs? Anyway, Hello. Conclave is down to two dragons. Alora <laughs> over there. All agree it's time to bring the fight to Amon. The Pike has the plate now. That changes things. Um, yes, it does. I'm awesome with it yet. Yeah, she still needs practice. She still possesses Cabal's ruin, though. Yeah, one of the vestiges. Chasing vestiges all over the map. Scanlan, you'll rather quiet. Back me up here. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, he's Whatever distracted. What's with you? Yeah. Busy all morning. How am I supposed to save Taldore when I can't even talk to my own fucking daughter? Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. Oh, We're gonna need a moment okay. with Scanlan. Look, guys. Um, I'm gonna go check on him. Probably for the best. And Kaylee was who again? Oh, oh, geez, Grog. Oh, wait, he has a picture of the Sphinx in his room. Oh, I'm a terrible person. I don't know. Oh, she, is. I don't know if she hates me. I abandoned her. So you can see she's okay. I can do that. Yeah. I, I, will this work? Oh, the blade. You went back for that sword. Of course. It's hers. All right. Oh, Give stop. That's so depressing. Oh, walking right past. Scanlan, fucking Sharho. Nope, not Scanlan. Oh, is actually looking for him still. Stupid, stupid girl. Oh, she does still want to see him. Oh. <laughs> Just a door fall. To Whitestone. Oh boy, this is. Oh, I had a feeling we were going to Whitestone here. Oh. Things are about to go horribly south. No! He stepped out! Oh shit. It'll be nice delivering good news for a change. Except it's not going to be. Ah. Uh... <gasps> shit! No shit, no. They've hatched. Shit. Oh no. Come on. They just rebuilt. Come on. Uh, I hate when I'm right. And do what you can. Uh splitting up is not a great idea. We have to be. Uh the splitting up is not great. God, they're just burning everything. Ah, oh, that's not great. Oh. At least these things are, I guess, children. I mean, still not great. Ooh, that'll do it. Oh man, all right. Well, at least they have some defenses. God, they have a multiple firing at least. Whew. Oh, jeez. Whoo! Way to reflect it back. Come on. You gotta do something, Pike. Come on, Pike. You have the defense against them. You gotta do something. I haven't really learned any water spells yet. Yes. All right. You gotta do the Aramente stuff. Yep, spread that. That'll help. That's a create water spell right there. All right, never mind on the role play. We got role play for a little bit, but that was about it. <laughs> Woo! All right, Vax one a one v one and a dragon. There we go. All right. Good. All right. Good stuff. Oh, that took a lot out of them. Oh, the castle. Shit. 
Ripley's becoming much more of a problem. All right, there's one down. There we go. Ooh, you... Come on. You about to do some serious. <laughs> yes, wrestle a dragon casually. <laughs> jeez. <gasps> Gilmore. Oh, jeez. Cassandra, please still be alive. Ah, this place just got rebuilt. Come on. Yes. All right. Cassandra still a badass. I mean, never stop being, but. Oh, man. She, uh. What does she fight? I feel like she's like a rogue. Oh man, I thought this wasn't gonna be a combat episode, but clearly not the case. Ah oh, man. I am so sorry. Not the time. Come on, you gotta absorb it. Woohoo! There we go. That's a good hit. Ah, uh, stress. So much stress. Oh, please don't die, Cassandra. So many close deaths. I don't think everybody's gonna last here. Woo! That's a good hit. Ah, but these things just keep coming. Oh, not great. Not great. Oh, geez, he shrunk back down. That's not great. Entire ceiling's going down. Oh, man, the entire castle going down. No, the entire place. They're, they're just, they're just leaving. They did what they needed to. Crap. These guys just recovered. Yep, gonna help as much as possible. Jeez. Barely a handful of hatchling dragons. Did this. Oh man. How did they find judgment is clouded by anger. My fudge is clouded. Oh, oh, Grog, Grog, my guy. We had a it's chill. It's not, it's not her. Oh. Not cured. revenge for Borogol. If I had warned Whitestone, he would realize we were working together. I couldn't stop. Oh, man, this is not going well. Come on, don't. Don't kill her. It's gonna go well. Not gonna go well. Who had motive to destroy the Dorolos? Oh, uh, Ripley. Yep. Woo! Yep. Percy. Percy knows. It was Ripley. A demonstration. That the unarmed cannot defend themselves. Then we'll hunt. Uh, and what of our deal? It's over. Oh, uh, you just made an enemy. Well then, it didn't have to be like this. I don't like this at all. I, I, I. As much as I think that she is a problem, I don't think that was the right time to do it. Every time I try to do the right thing, the people I love, the people who matter, get hurt. Mm. I knew as soon as he was talking about happiness. Ripley won't let me. I'll be right beside you. Oh, they're so Aren't cute. Worried? These hands would always carry the stain of evil, but perhaps I can finally scour them clean in Ripley's blood. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, this song, jeez. I am so, so very worried. This is this is going to be a test of Percy's true strength here. <sighs> Crap. So I suppose we should start with the happy stuff, right? <laughs> just because the happy stuff led into the absolute just like dumpster fire that was the very end of this. Um, <laughs> it was really cool um, seeing Scanlan's pad and, you know, all of his servants and whatnot. It very much reminded me um, when I played a uh, spoiler alert, if you've never played Curse of Strahd and you're playing it right now, keep it. Maybe maybe skip ahead a little bit here, but 
in Curse of Strahd, when I was playing with my buddies, um, we encountered uh, Mordekainen, who we helped to free, and uh, he gave us refuge for the night. And he had, like, just the ability to go into just a secret uh, house that he had that he could pop up anywhere he wanted. And... Uh, that right there reminded me a lot of what Scanlan had, and clearly he made some modifications to it. He had, um, you know, a, a lot that he had uh, <laughs> flaunted, I, I guess, for lack of a better term. And it was so awesome, so awesome to finally get the bathtub scene. I. I, I feel like everybody would have rioted if we never got the bathtub scene. That is probably the most well-known scene, like outside of the critter community, outside of Critical World, that people know very well. Um, obviously, we got the first scene with you know I opened the door completely naked. Uh, I, you know, such a power move, <laughs> and not you know Percy having the you know the liquid courage, but you know this was the. Percy vaccine and obviously having Vaxel Dan there just, just sealed the deal. Just him just casually walking in there. There's so much to unpack. I love everything about this. It is so freaking funny. Great freaking scene. So happy that they officially animated it. It's amazing, wonderful. 10 out of 10, would recommend. But I knew that the happiness wouldn't last because the next morning we clearly see, um, actually, no, the, the night before, after, you know, Percy and Vex having, you know, a very nice night with just the two of them, we had, you know, Percy talking about his future and how, you know, he wants to settle in Whitestone and that Vex is a technically royalty and that, you know, he would love to, you know, settle down and help his people and all that. As soon as you started mentioning that, my suspicions were kind of confirmed. Like, I had a feeling like, you know, every time any of them get any flicker, any spark of happiness, it is taken away. And clearly we'll get to that in a second. But Scanlan going off yet again to try and make things right with Kaylee. I, I know he has to do it, and I know it's distracting him from the overall, um, the overall mission. But it couldn't have come at a worse time. Like I saw him stepping out, and I just knew that things were uh, shit was gonna hit the fan right then and there, and that's exactly what happened. I thought this was gonna be mostly role play, and then here we are having Thordax spawn just wrecking Whitestone. Uh, I'm absolutely shocked beyond belief that we didn't have anybody die. I, I truly thought that we were going to have a death of some kind or another with these guys. Like, I don't know. It it was hard to believe that that was uh, what ended up transpiring in that regard. But ultimately, I think the biggest... I, I think the biggest loss, and it sucks to say this, the biggest loss here was Raishan. Like, Whitestone has suffered so much, and I do sincerely think that Raishan was trying to help because she obviously was, you know, betrayed by Thordak and was deceiving him. Now, does that mean that she's going to reveal information about them to Thordak? I, I don't know. I feel like there's some ulterior motive that we're missing here, but I don't think that was the time to cut ties with her. Because I, I understand what she's saying. Like, if she had warned them, it could have been even worse. And uh, obviously she's looking out for herself, but at the same time, like, if... If she had gone and warned them and they were able to defend themselves better, Thordak might have came in and taken care of business himself instead of having it as a, oh, just send the spawn. They'll be okay on their own. And 
Like, I, I know, I know that she's the villain. I know that there is... I, I mean, she obviously allied herself with the bad guys and she was helping Vox Machina, but I, I don't think... <sighs> I don't know, it's so hard to tell with her. She's such a cool character and there's a, there's a lot of depth to her and obviously I understand why she was helping Vox Machina against Thordak. I do get the feeling that as soon as Thordak was out of the picture that she would have been immediately turned on them. But I don't think that she wanted to turn on them right now. And I feel like if they managed to take out Thordak, then she wouldn't be as much of a problem unless she had some bigger plan to cripple the rest of them. But she's dying. Like, she's going to die regardless. If she takes all these, you know, players off the board, then... She's going to die regardless. She loses no matter what. And you could even see, like, whatever illness, whatever sickness that she had, it was traveling even further. She is... Her, her disease is progressing, and it's progressing at a rate that I don't think she's going to survive much longer. I... I will say I at least appreciate... Vax sticking up for Keyleth because Keyleth hasn't trusted her this entire time, especially because um, Raishan was very much complacent and participated in the killing of so many, um, including Sovereign Uriel. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a major player that they took off the board that she specifically took off the board and there's so many others that she has killed in the name of the Chroma Conclave. Like, it was hard to trust her, but she... Was playing the long game and I think that this is going to come back to bite them in the ass, but I have no clue how or what is going to happen with that moving forward. I do think that if Pike had been able to harness her vestige a little bit better, things would have not been as rough during this fight. But she clearly still has a lot to learn when it comes to it. I'm actually honestly kind of shocked that she's still able to do magic. I thought that because she went to the Hells, got what she needed, even though the Everlight told her not to, that she would lose her abilities, but she still got them. And so I'm, I'm very curious to see if that ends up changing as time goes on. Percy. Percy knew right then and there who had done it. And that little flash at the very end for him, that little flash of him, like saying that by killing her, maybe he can finally get this evil that he feels off of his hands. But then like the flash of the glasses, like this hasn't, this is the first time all season that we've seen kind of the, like, Blaze over once again. Like, it's a very iconic look for him, and it only happened when he was out for revenge. And I think Raishan's words towards him were not to be taken lightly. Like, he is blinded once again by vengeance. I think he thinks that he is going about this the right way, that he is doing it for, you know, a bigger cause. But obviously, there's going to be a little bit of vengeance behind all of that. And I do fear what will happen next. I feel like part of how he's going to have to overcome Ripley is he is going to have to truly come over Orthax. I think that he's going to end up trying to convince Ripley or convince Orthax to leave Ripley. And then he's going to try to kill him within his own mind. But that just bears so much risk. But obviously, like, every single character so far has had an insane amount of growth. Even within this season, like, we've seen really no character left behind. I'd probably say maybe Grog hasn't gotten a lot of development this season. But I, I do think that's very much purposeful because he got so much development at the end of last season. Scanlan is obviously taking up a lot of character development. He, I don't like his timing on things. He definitely, um, he definitely picked an awful time to do this. 
And he, put, uh, and he only just barely bailed out Percy and the rest of Vox Machina when he came to their aid um, uh, several episodes ago. And so I think with him gone, I don't know. I mean, seeing uh, Kaylee like still desiring him to be nearby. If that hadn't happened, I think that we would have seen a much different outcome, but I'm worried for the course of action that Percy is on. We didn't get a lot of development for him in season two for obvious reasons. You know, he was the focus of season one, but he's back for season three and Ripley is within his crosshairs. And I think it's only going to get worse from here on out. And so I'm genuinely concerned. I have no clue where this is going to take him or Vox Machina. I get the feeling like next episode is very much going to be like track down Ripley and kill her. If they don't kill her in the next episode, then it'll probably be the episode following that. But we're halfway through the season. There's still so much that could happen. We still have Ripley. We still have Thordak. And obviously Cabal's Ruin is the vestige that Ripley is wielding. Do we think that Keyleth will also end up with a vestige? Because at this point, there's only two of them that don't have a vestige. I truly think that Cabal's Ruin is very much going to be what Percy wields. It just makes the most sense in my mind. But I have no idea what Keyleth could end up having here. Like, I don't know, is it a magical set of antlers or, a, I don't know, an armor, clothing piece? Uh, maybe a staff. I, who knows? Maybe it's a staff. I, I really can't say for sure, but um, it'd be kind of weird if everybody got a vestige and then Keyleth just didn't have one. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I just feel like that's the course of action we have to go with. Everybody has a vestige, and then we go in, fight Thordak, and see what happens next. And so, obviously, I know that they must succeed against Thordak, but I am curious to see how they go about succeeding. Like, is there going to be character deaths? Who is going to make it out? Who is not going to make it out? I, I truly don't know. I'm sure there's things that I missed here. There was a lot of things happening in this episode. And so I love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, obviously make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. But in the meantime, class, you're officially dismissed. I need to go and think about so many things here and then wait for next weekend. So that way we can get the next bit of episodes because, oh boy, this is going to be absolutely insane. But. Meantime, class, you are officially dismissed, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace out, everybody.